Hello. How's it goes? There we go. Is this music loud? Or is it just me? Me feeling like it's loud. Good morning. I know it's not morning for all of you, but it's 10 a.m. here. And, and I'm gonna get a quick stream done early and then get my stuff done for the day. I'm trying to be good. And I think this is a good system for me to do a stream early, a short stream early, and then get to my stuff for the day. You feel me? Anyways, I am so close to finishing this and I cut my little fingies. Oh, here. I cut my little fingies. So I haven't been knitting the last couple days. Um, so now I want to. I'm so close. Okay. I have. I have one sleeve over here. You see her? Little cap sleeve. Yeah, there's a, a perpetual laundry. Sorry, this camera's small. Anyways, and then I've got to block it. I've got to wet block it. How cold is it around y'all? Yeah, um, 57 degrees. Fahrenheit, which feels very cold, but I know that that's not that big of a deal. My friend was, my friend is in Seattle and they said, girl, 15 degrees. I said, Wah. that's too cold. I'm already cold. One whole degree. That's too cold. That's too cold. Too cold. Anyways, how y'all doing? How was your weekend? What's that in Celsius? I don't know. Cold. Sorry. Sorry, I don't know the Celsius. Anyways, I just tried to get a... It was the first time using the App Store on my Apple Watch. And I thought I downloaded a new app. Where is it? List view. A row counter. I saw someone using a row counter on their Apple Watch and I said that's genius this doesn't it didn't work I don't know I said get double click to install oh wait I did the wrong place I did the wrong I did the wrong double click hold on sorry I'm a grandma double click e -e. processing did it. Okay, now it's downloading the... Oh! Never mind. I don't want to enter my password on a tiny little watch. I don't want to. I refuse. Sorry, so you guys are just going to have to help me uh, count. <sighs> we hosted the fourth coldest NFL playoff game in history. Wow. Wow. Should've turned on the heat. That is ridiculous. Okay, anyways. I finished doing my, this angle, I'm not, I'm not feeling the camera angle. Or perhaps I should just tilt it up a little bit more because I feel like my, my hands will rest naturally, a little bit more naturally, up a little higher.
Okay, I finished doing my German short rows so that I have a cap sleeve. So now I'm gonna go around six times and you have to help me remember. Um, and then we're gonna do a lace edge and then I'm gonna cast off and then I'm gonna wet block it. Okay. What keyboard is that? This is a ducky something. Ducky something. I'm fond of it. Ducky something. Hey, Tata. Uh, it's not custom. Ducky, it's like, it said matcha. Yeah, I like it. I mean, listen, here's the problem. Here's the thing. It doesn't matter what kind of keyboard I get because I don't know how to type. I just wanted something cute and like tactile. You know, I can't type good. I tried to do Mavis Beacon teaches typing. I got bored. So I type only with these fingers, you know? Anyways. Ducky 1-3 matcha 10 keyless. That's correct. That sounds correct. Hell yeah. Stitch stopper friends. Eee. -e. I have a typewriter. I just got it out of storage. It was my grandma's, I think. Somebody's. I don't know. I told you guys I've been uh, cleaning out my storage. I'm trying to clean out the storage unit, so I've been going through so much stuff. And like, what do you guys do with like old family photos and stuff? Like, I don't have an attic. All I have is a garage. I was gonna keep them in the garage and then Matt was like, um, hey, you shouldn't do that. And I googled it and I was like, oh my god, you're right. Yeah, these are tiny. These are little itty bitty guys. This a nine inch, nine inch circular needles. They're itty bitty. Um, so like I just have them in bins and uh, I don't know. Do you want to see? This is my great aunt. Look at this fierce picture. I pulled it out because I thought it was fierce. Look at her. Right? With that chair. It's my great aunt Betty. I loved her. Here, here's a picture of us. Aren't we cute? It doesn't it's not focusing very well. There's my face in the reflection. Is that nice for you? Maybe I'll do it like this. There we go. That's better. Fierce. Fierce. See? It's my mom. And my Aunt Betty and Uncle Len. They're dead. They died. Unfortunately. There she is. No, they're not digitized. I just pulled these out of storage. I guess I could do that. I digitized um, all of my baby videos. <laughs> yeah, she was in a gaming chair. That was my great aunt, not my grandma. Technically, I'm not even related to her. She married my grandpa's brother okay do you want to see something else this always happens i start streaming and then i'm like look at all my stuff it turns into show and tell hee <laughs> hee my mom is a natural what are you talking about? This? 
She's never dyed her hair in her life. That's right, Tato, you tell him. Um, well, I didn't, I didn't watch the home videos with Matt. I sent them away to a company and then they digitized them and mailed them back to me. Hi, he's here. He's here. Here comes the boy. Perfect. Thank you so much for subscribing. Oh, Pity, also thank you for subscribing. Sorry, I didn't see it. Oh my gosh. Um, okay, here are the cool things to show you. My dad. He's dead also. Oh, there he is. There he is again. Look at that. What a handsome gentleman. Dapper Dan. Menthol Messiah, thank you so much. Okay, and then these are cool. My dad lived in Israel for a while. Um, we're not Israeli, but he's but Jewish. He lived in Israel for a while, composed a rock opera, was in some movies, um, did some stuff. Anyways, I found these prints of him in a movie in Israel. Cool. Abba. Abba. No, not Jesus Christ Superstar. It's is it's Israeli. You've never heard of it, I promise. Abba. No, my dad is not Andrew Lloyd Webber, sorry. No, just my dad is Jewish. He married a Shiksa goddess. So I had a lady um, at my like knitting thing. I almost threw hands. I didn't. I wasn't. I wasn't close at all to throwing hands. But I was a little like. <laughs> um. She was like, she's Jewish, and we we're talking about Jewish stuff. And uh, I don't know, something came up where I was like, no, my mom isn't Jewish, my dad is Jewish, I'm Jewish on my dad's side. And she was like, then you're not Jewish. And I was like, I am. She was like, well, how can you be Jewish if your mom's not Jewish? <laughs> Ooh, girl. It is rude. I know it's a thing, and many Jews would not consider me a full blown Jew because of my shiksa mother. But uh, I don't consider myself religious, anyways. I'm, I'm, I'm an ethnic Jew. This is, I don't know, it's called a blouse. The pattern says blouse. Is kugel a dessert or an entree? Kugel is a side for me. I don't want to just eat kugel by itself. No, Matt isn't Jewish at all. I married a shiksa goddess too. <laughs> this is, no, this is the, um, I will show you. What did that say? Anthony, thank you so much for subscribing and using your prime sub 
here with little old me. Ophelia blouse. Really cute pattern. I will warn you if you're a knitter. It's knitted flat in stockinette, so there's a lot of purling. <laughs> I've never had kugel with potatoes. Instead of noodles? I don't know. I don't know about that. I've only ever had it with noodles, but maybe that's why I'm not that fond of it. I'm sure. I don't know what the male version of Shiksa is, to be honest. I just tease him. Kugel is a sort of sweet noodle casserole. Noodle Kugel. Oh, I'm so glad that your wife got into It Takes Two. That's a great game. That is a really good game. Thank you so much for watching our videos and for being here. For saying hello and for using your Prime sub. <laughs> um, it's got like cinnamon in it, kugel. I don't know, I've never been that big of a kugel fan. Okay, I'll, I'll, I'll have to I'll have to look into this potato kugel of which you speak. My parents, though, if you're a if you're a Seinfeld enjoyer, they look exactly like uh, George and Susan. <laughs> Just short, tiny Jewish man, bald, glasses. Tall, blonde, shiksa lady. Aw, oh, thank you. Zenergy. Macaroni casserole. Cheese and brown sugar in it. It was so good. I'll be honest with you, that sounds really gross, but I believe you that it that it's good. No. George Susan relationship didn't didn't end very well. He killed her by accident. Well, he didn't kill her. The envelopes did. But also my parents' <laughs> relationship didn't end very well either. They got divorced when I was five. So, who's to say? If, if Susan hadn't died, who would know? Maybe it would have been the same. But my dad was not a psychopath, <laughs> like George Costanza. Oh, it's okay. It just, it's the, uh, the divorce is just part of the recipe that makes me, me. <laughs> right? We all have recipes. Some of us are a simple uh, meringue, just a, just a whipped egg white and sugar. And some of us are um, you know, maybe a Caesar salad with anchovies in the dressing. I like anchovies, but I know that that is not for everyone. I gotta tilt this up again. No, I never did birthright. I don't really want to, to be honest. I've thought about it a while. I just like, ugh, I don't want to go do like camp. <laughs> I think I'm too old now, I, but there are birthrights where you can like take, take, uh, take your spouse for like married Jews. But also, yeah, not now anyways, for sure. And also, I don't want, like, I don't know. I've always kind of thought of birthright as, like, idea of propaganda a little bit. <laughs> but, um, but yeah, I mean, a free trip to Israel would be cool. Anyways, enough about that. These needles are very small.
yeah, hot topic. That's why I said enough about that. I can sort of see Matt in the back of my mind, like, <laughs> don't. He's right. The Matt in the back of my mind is right. That's enough of that. Planning on streaming Final Fantasy VII Rebirth? Yeah, absolutely. Next video is Valorant. I don't know, somebody typed in what it was. Ducky, ducky something. No, we never got a chance to finish Baldur's Gate, unfortunately. That's the, the name of the game. Gotta move on. Gotta move on, unfortunately. Not a lot of time to do, um, Leisurely gaming. <laughs> I didn't finish Starfield. I bounced often. I bounced often. But yeah, I don't know. I think Matt wanted to finish that. I mean, Starfield isn't as long as Baldur's Gate, I feel. Um, I uh, did knitting in elementary school. It was so fun. When did you learn? I learned around the same time as you in elementary school, but I wasn't, I was at summer camp. I was at summer camp. I was in a production of Beauty and the Beast in which I played a painting. I was a tiny child and there are a bunch of older girls knitting, and I was like, you better teach me how to do that, bitch. And they did. And then when my dad picked me up from summer camp, I was like, listen, sir, we need to go to Joanne Fabric right now so that I can get some needles and yarn. There is not another option. Yeah, in those exact words, both of those things I said. And then we did. The Joanne, I don't know if it's still there. On. Oh boy. Magnolia. And Sherman Oaks. I know, Joanne is not doing well. That's too bad. Really like the look of that yarn, thank you. This is uh, Harriet Fine Alpaca in copper, I think. And you can't really see it that well on this camera, but it's like blue and orange. And I was just like so obsessed with it, every time I saw it in the yarn store, I kept coming back to it and touching it, and I was just like, oh, I really need this. And then finally I bought it, and then I sat with it for a while, and then I was like, I would really like to make something with this, and then found this pattern, and I, you know, the yarn tells you what it wants to be. Started my knitting journey a few months ago. 20 plus year crocheter, first time knitter. Wow, congratulations. I'm stretching my back. Something is hurting me. Ugh. Yeah, my friend in middle school taught me how to crochet. You see me, Ashy? Thank you for subscribing. Gotta go over and out Girl Scout and chat. Bye. Reminded me that I ordered Girl Scout cookies. It's Girl Scout cookie time. Okay, I, th I, I, I told you guys not to let me forget to count rows and you already did it. I think this is my second row. 
Someone's bonking out there. Someone's banging around. Um, listen, I think we can all agree that the best Girl Scout cookie is a Samoa. The coconut one. With the caramel and the drizzles. Like, I can acknowledge, even if it's not what I want every single time, I can acknowledge that that's the best cookie. For sure. But listen, Benny, like, Thin Mints are not as universal as a Samoa. Like, the Samoa has chocolate in it. But if you're not a huge chocolate fan, which many people aren't, many people don't want to eat just chocolate, then you're not going to want a Thin Mint at all. Samoas are more of a crowd pleaser. I do love a Thin Mint, and I love a Tag Along. I got some new thing that I've never seen before. The new cookie chocolate peanut butter one is also really good. I haven't had it in a while. I need to look at this close. One, two. Two rows. Yeah, but the, the coconut in a Samoa, it's so small. It's like very finely shredded. It's not like a mound bar or something, you know? It's like, I feel like it's more like sprinkles. But I understand. But also, I do not understand those who do not like coconut. Dosey does are good. Sir? What's happening? What? Can I help you? Do you have a place you would like to, to settle? That's a good spot. Yeah, come on. That's an even better spot. Yes. But settle, but settle. Settle down. Calm down. Calm down. You know what I was thinking in the car the other day? I was thinking it might be fun to make um, Patreon uh, Spotify playlists. I don't know. I know a lot of songs, okay? Not to brag. I know a lot of songs. I don't have Apple Music, but maybe, I don't know.
I also like to hear other people's music tastes. And sometimes I find cool songs I want to share. Tato is Rubbins. And like we could vote on like a vibe or something or a mood, a mood for the playlist. Be like songs that are weird and you've never heard anything like that or songs that make you want to shake your big fat ass or songs with uh, vocals that don't quit, you know, something like that. Or like songs that are bad, but I love them anyways. That would be fun. Tato is really not knowing what to do here. He's just sitting. Songs with misheard lyrics. I'm a little man. And I'm also evil. Also into cats. It would just be a Fallout Boy playlist. <laughs> Fallout Boy and Radiohead. Someone is banging. Someone is banging outside. Everybody drink water. I don't have any. I only brought coffee. Someone is hammering. I don't care for that. I used to love those misunderstood Fallout Boy lyric videos in the early days of YouTube. Good times. I don't know if I'll be able to finish this sleeve on stream. <laughs> Lawrence O'Donnell, I do not, I don't know. It's not ringing a bell. Can we make a playlist of songs that should be banished from existence? Why would you do that? That gives them more power. Putting them all together in one place? To be honest, to this day, I still can't make out some of the lyrics to Sugar, We're Going Down. It goes, Am I more than you bargained for yet? Oh, been dying to tell you anything you want to hear. And that's just who I am this week. I'm lying in the grass next to the mausoleum. I'm just a notch in your bed pose, but you're just a line in a song. And then this part I don't know. Drop a home, break a name. We're always sleeping in and we're sleeping with the wrong team. I don't know. We're going down, down in a himmy and bam. We're going down, down and I'm turning around. Sugar, we're going down swinging. Right? I need to look up the lyrics. <laughs> Sugar, we're going down. Lyrics. Am I more than you buggy for yet? Been dying to tell you anything you want to hear because that's who I am this week. I got far, okay. Lie in the grass next to the mausoleum. I'm just a notch in your bed post, but you're just a line in a song. Drop a heart. See, that's the problem though, is like the, the real lyrics don't make much more sense than the fake ones that you had in your head. 
drop a heart and break a name that was correct doesn't seem correct it's a play on words drop a name break a heart yeah but what's the what's the what's the that only works if like it works you know like like switching things like that I feel like it's only clever if the switch still works. You know what I mean? I can't think of an example. Yeah, a coherent second meaning. Okay. We're always sleeping in and sleeping for the wrong team. What are you talking about? We're going down, down in an earlier round. And sugar, we're going down swinging. I'll be your number one with a bullet. A loaded god complex, cock it and pull it. That's disgusting. I don't like that. I feel like I knew that, those words. He doesn't know what he's talking about. He doesn't know what he's saying. He's making nonsense words. There's no meaning. He's just saying whatever he feels like it. It's like, this will sound cool, bullet, cock it and pull it. Yeah. Meanwhile, can't even understand what he's saying. Doesn't matter. I loved it. And I will still sing it in my car loud. Thanks for the memories is the most nonsense words. <laughs> well, let's, let's do it. Let's have a look at the nonsense words. Thanks for the memories. Oh, I had to think about for a second how this song goes. It wasn't making sense to me, but I got it. It goes ba, 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 ba. I'm gonna make you bend and break. Say a prayer, but let the good times roll. In case God doesn't show. My dorks is barking. And I want these words to make things right, but it's the wrongs that make the words come to life. Who does he think he is? If that's the worst you've got, better point your fingers back to the keys. One night and one more time. Thanks for the memories, even though they weren't so great. He tastes like you, only sweeter. One night and one more time. Thanks for the memories, thanks for the memories. See, he tastes like you, only sweeter. Oh. What are you talking about? Ew, I hate this. I'm gonna tell you why I hate this. Okay, he says in the next verse, he says, I'm looking forward to the future, but my eyesight is going bad. And this crystal ball. Beep, beep. And then it goes into, it's always cloudy except for, and I don't like that the last line of that little chunklet is a is setting up like is is interrupted you know it's like the beginning of another thing do you know what i'm talking about Mo, looking forward to the future my side is going bad 
And this crystal ball. That sound that seems like it should end. And be the end. But and this crystal ball is always cloudy, except for I don't like that. I don't like that. Patrick. I don't like it. Yep, roasted. It's not always cloudy except for when you look into the past. One night stand. One night stand. Oh! One night and one more time. Thanks for the memory. Yeah, the music is really doing all the work. And he maybe he knows that his lyrics are nonsense and that's why he sings like that so no one can really understand them. Fueled by ramen bands. I don't know what that means. I don't know what those words mean that you said. Fueled by ramen bands just wholesale lifted the script from the movie closer in that era. Those are a bunch of words that I don't understand together. Songs used to have actually good music and not just catchy lyrics. Okay, grandpa. Songs still have good music. <laughs> oh. Fueled by Ramen was a record label. Okay. Oh. I loved the killers. I love Hot Fuss. Interesting. I didn't know that they were all the same. Wow. Okay, three rows. That's three rows. We are knitting. Yeah. You first heard the killers playing Guitar Hero 3. Wow. Well, I was watching Celebrity Jeopardy and I was able to answer a question because of Guitar Hero. Nobody else knew it. And I was like, you idiots! God. I don't remember what it was, though. Well, my fifth grade class in our yearbook, we voted Mr. Brightside as our favorite song. So been a Killers fan for a while now. You know, probably before you played Guitar Hero 3. Just saying. I knew about them for a long time. <laughs> Haley Williams. I love her. I still have a crush on her. She is so good. Would we speed run any game? No. No. No, it wasn't marketed to fifth graders, but it was on the radio, you know? And I remember um, in sixth grade, I had gone to middle school and the hot song everybody was was jamming to was my humps. Good one. I didn't know what milky milky cocoa puffs meant, but I knew it was fun. And I was saying, my lovely lady lumps, meanwhile, shaped like this shaped like this, not a lump in sight.
Don't Stop Believin' was supposed to be my 8th grade class song, but it got denied for the line, Everybody wants a thrill. That is so funny. That could mean anything. A roller coaster is a thrill. Everybody does want a thrill. Ugh, I used to love Black Eyed Peas. Don't funk with my heart. <laughs> Cannot play Smells Like Teen Spirit for our ninth grade graduation. <laughs> yeah. Our graduation song. Okay, hold on. Let me think. Fifth grade. Fifth grade was I Believe I Can Fly. Eighth grade was Frick. I don't remember. I remember the class before me when I was in seventh grade because I was in choir and we sang at the eighth grade graduation and they were like auditioning solos and I didn't get one because I wasn't in eighth grade. And they were like, we really want to give these solos to eighth graders. And I was like, <laughs> all right. And that song was um, When You Believe from Prince of Egypt. And I was so jealous that that wasn't our song too, but I don't remember what our song was. Okay, and then high school graduation. We had two songs. We had two performances. And one of them was a dance number with singing to Funds We Are Young. I did not participate in that one. That one was not for me. And then another one was an acoustic, um, a, an acoustic version of, I mean, it's already kind of acoustic, <laughs> of Good Riddance Time of Your Life, but it was played on probably six different acoustic guitars by students plus lots of singing and my friend and i had a duet and our line was so make the best of this test and don't ask why but with the harmony i threw a harmony on top there so make the best of this test and don't ask why something like that it was a mess though it was a mess because the guitar players all started boom ba dee ba dum ba doo yeah I'm telling you now gangy boom ba dee ba dum ba doo ba dee ba dum ba doo ba dee ba dum ba doo ba dee ba dum ba and then my friend Kyle was the first had the first line of the song so it was going doom ba dee ba dum ba doo ba dee ba dum ba doo ba dee ba dum ba doo ba dee another dee ba dee ba dum ba doo ba dee ba dum ba doo another turning and everyone was it was the wrong time to come in threw everything off. All the guitars had to, oh, we're all 17. Nobody knows how to do anything. It was not good. My friend Rachel and I were laughing, unfortunately. <laughs> we were, at the end of the performance, we were just, we looked at each other and we were just like, oh, laughed on stage. Said bye, bye now. This is one, two, three, four, five. No, one, two, three, four. Yeah. I found our, um, in storage, we did this thing in high school called Senior Exaggerated Photos, where the entire senior class, I mean, it was a very small school, so there were like 50. 50 seniors I don't know um what creepy doll in the background oh that's Barbie her alone um 
all the seniors got to take a photo that encapsulated who we were. Let me get it. I'll show you. I'll show you. Oh my god, fun. No, we didn't have most anything voting. We didn't do that in high school. In middle school we did, but I did not get anything. I really flew under the radar. Came with posters. Most random? I would be furious about that. Okay, so here's the senior exaggerated photos. Got like a big poster of everyone, you know? And so I'm trying to see. I'm trying to like blast anyone or whatever i'm trying to just show you my mind <laughs> you know okay there she is <laughs> let me do it here yay i had my my cockatiel because sometimes i would bring my cockatiel to school with me and then I have crystals and tarot cards. And that, yeah, make derp not war is my friend Tori. <laughs> yeah. Tori's a good one. We're still friends. So there's that. Okay, what's this? Oh, this is my um, fifth grade fifth grade uh i guess these are called like class photos i don't know so i will show you uh i guess i was gonna gloss over the fact that i brought a bird to school i did it sometimes there were there was one day that i brought him to school and he was with me all day it was like a short day or something, or it was like later in the day. Um, you still be into tarot? Mm, theoretically. Well, I'm, I'm only able to find these photos immediately because I've been going through our storage unit and like I just have them. I know where they are. Um, anyways, yeah, I would bring my bird to school sometimes. I was definitely like bird girl. And in college, I got a note from my therapist that saying that um Chachki was a therapy animal which he was and so i had my my cockatiel in my dorm and i had like a little sign on my door that was like home of Chachki the cockatiel yeah i do love tarot and like if i'm ever feeling lost and just like i need guidance i'll pull some cards or something and just see cuz listen if anyone tells you that they can read your future, they cannot. They're lying. They're full of it. It's just guidance. It's just like advice. Yeah. Okay. So this is fifth grade. Uh, there she is featuring a limited two fleece jacket tied around the waist very cute what a star and then if you ever um if you ever watched uh hannah montana um there he is rico <laughs> yep <laughs> cool cool <laughs> Very cool. Yeah. 
it's not a fun reveal. And I knew exactly where he was because he was the smallest, <laughs> the smallest kid in our school. I know, truly could not have seen that coming, I know. Very famous. <laughs> he only was there for fifth grade. He just came in for fifth grade. That's it. But are horoscopes slash astro signs real? I just think it's fun. Well, we all graduated after fifth grade. And we all, we already knew he was on Hannah Montana. He like, he was on Hannah Montana at that time or something. So I don't know. He had probably been moving around. We all knew he was kind of famous. If it wasn't Hannah Montana, I don't know if the timeline is right. It was something else that we were like, oh, this guy, he's on TV, something like that. It must have been Hannah Montana. I don't know what else I would have known about or like we all would have known about. You know? I have another, I have, um, these ones aren't as interesting though because like, I went to a humongous middle school. Humongous. I mean, it's been there for a thousand years. Um, there were like 2,000 kids in my class. So it's not as interesting to see something like this. There I am, right there. <laughs> she said, it's too many, it's awful. Bye, Gangi. That's those, and then this is high school, but also not very interesting. Anyways. But it's been fun to like find all these things. It's crazy. Thanks for the memories, even though they weren't so great. Middle school sucks. How good is Pen 15 though? Very accurate pink sweater. Are you talking about the hot pink thing that I was making last time? The tank top? Because I did finish that. It's a gift. I've played Sayonara Wild Hearts. I have it. I did finish that. It's a gift for someone that I haven't given them yet. And I'm using like the leftover yarn that pink yarn to make a matching bandana for her dog. Which is cute. Pen 15 makes me cry. I watched it again recently, it's so good. Yeah, her freaking dog is about to have the fanciest bandana ever. Merino wool bandana. Bougie. I have been knitting for approximately 20 years. It's been 84 years. It's hard with these tiny little needles and with a band-aid on my fingy. Fingy band-aid.
What's up, everyone? <laughs> Is anyone making anything? What are you guys making? About 15 or so work. I love to knit. I like to crochet too, but I really love to knit. You drawing right now? What are you drawing? Working on an anniversary present for my partner. Aww, what are you making? Do you believe in the knitted sweater curse? No, I don't believe in any curses or rules or anything, except, except theater ones. I'm not risking nothing in the theater. If I'm in a play, not risking nothing. I will be saying break a leg and not good luck. I will be not saying Macbeth. I will be saying the Scottish play. Mm -hmm. And I will be saying thank you five. Ew. We did Macbeth though in high school in my junior year and so there was a lot of uh there were a lot of slip ups broke boy kyle thank you so much for eight months wow big gaming time for you um so whenever we would slip and say macbeth in the theater when we weren't performing You'd have to like run outside and spit and spin around and stuff, you know. It was silly. Um, I haven't tried those wo Wobble crochet kits. I bought some crochet kits at the Fiber Fair. At the SoCal Fiber Fair. From a very lovely gentleman who makes them. His, uh, uh I will give him a shout out right now, okay? So you, you look up Club Crochet on Instagram and stuff. I think he has a YouTube channel too, but he recognized us, Matt and I, at the Fiber Fest. Fiber Fair. And uh, he, we bought some crochet kits from him and they're super cute. And he gave us one also as a gift. And I said, oh my gosh, so generous. He makes really fun ones. Okay, that's five rows, I think. Trying to count them, sorry. One, two, three, four, five. Okay, I'm gonna do one more and then I'll work, I'll do my lace. Thank you, broke boy Kyle. Ugh. Oh, to work at a yarn shop. If everything goes to shit, I'm gonna move to, like, the middle of nowhere and open a yarn store. <laughs> yeah, we do get questions on switching to ri wife reviews. It makes sense. It's fine. No, we will not switch to wife reviews. My fingy, I... Well, I have a cut there. I don't know exactly. I have a little, just a slice, a little cut. Little tiny ones, but when they're, like, on the inside of your hand... Stuff touches them all the time, and it's really bugging and hurting, really bothering. So I've been trying to keep them covered up. This one, I think, is finally uh, in in such a way that it's closed up enough that it won't be bothered. But this one is owie. Because I've just been cleaning so much stuff, and there is a broken glass picture fl picture flame. 
that I cut here, and I don't know what this one was. I've just been going through a lot of stuff. Oh my gosh, I'm fine. It's just a little inconvenient to have a little owie on the inside of your hand. And this one, I have a callus here. <laughs> I don't know if you can see it. There's like a little, um, I don't know, just, it's a callus, I guess. And I think I initially got it from Lyra. I was doing hoop. I was doing hoop <laughs> and it would give me calluses there and then once it like kind of formed there on my pinky now it's stayed there and continues to like sometimes it will you know get harder softer whatever um because of knitting like a knitting needle rests there often these ones are really small so it's not but i have like a knitting callus now weird I was just thinking about that the other day, that it's insane how the body heals itself because I was watching a vet show and I was thinking about an abscess or something because there was an abscess on there. And it's crazy, like pus is just white blood cells trying to fight infection and like whatever. And so like, it's crazy to me to think that like your body just sends all these white blood cells to your owies and it makes pus to try to like clear stuff out it's like disgusting but it's also like whoa these little armies armies of white blood cells yeah i haven't played guitar in a decade either and i have long nails now i've found that like having uh fake nails keeps me from picking my fingies because they're thicker it's not as like sharp and easy to so I've been into that lately, but I do I do miss playing guitar. The body does love to make goo. I love vet shows and medical shows and stuff. I'm fascinated by the human body and the human mind. I like a medical mystery and I like a murder mystery. Years ago, I dropped a glass while washing dishes and it stabbed my hand a bit and now it still hurts if I press the scar. Wow, I wonder why. Scar tissue, I guess? Just bumping against something in there? I have a scar. You can probably see it. Uh, maybe not, because this camera sucks. I have a scar going like all the way down my fingy here. Let me see if I can bring this little toast light over and you can see better. Yeah, you can kind of see it sort of no this fingy here yeah you can see it going all the way down my fingy into my palm that's from Joey oh boy that's a loaded question Okay, I will say my answer. As a Jew, what do I think about what's going on? I will say my answer and it will not be controversial and everyone will be happy and then we will never talk about it again. I hate it. I'm not happy. I fear for Palestinians and Israelis. There is a horrible, terrible history. Um... Israel has a very rough history, and I, for many years, have hated how Palestinians are treated. And now I'm just really sad. And at a loss for words. For everyone, all the innocent civilians of any background there. And I hate the government, and goodbye. Okay? 
That's the answer. It's not fair and it's bad. No one's right or wrong. Everything is wrong. <laughs> And now, that's that. <laughs> that's where I stand. No, we didn't do a honeymoon. Earlier, in the earlier years of a hand scar, I was directed to keep massaging it uh, to over, uh, over time to reincorporate the scar tissue. Oh, interesting. I have a, I don't know if you can see it. And I'm not about to get up close and personal with the camera, but I have a, I have a scar right here. Uh, Cause I busted my face on a hammock. <laughs> the hammock broke and hit me in the face. And that's why I have, um, this is a crown. Uh, where is it? This one? And like the gum is different, you know, cause this tooth got, uh, socked out of my face. <laughs> mm. And it wasn't all the way out. It was just like half out. I had to go to the emergency room. I got some stitches, but they couldn't do anything about my tooth in the emergency room. So I just had a... I just had a... It was like down and out it looked really bad my gum turned all like black and purple um and then the next day i went to the dentist and because it had been like a day or like eight hours or something since it happened i had a ton of swelling and they couldn't push my tooth all the way back in so they pushed it in as far as they could and then cemented it to the other tooth and then filed it down to match. Um, it was not nice. And then... Uh, and then... I'm trying to think. It got cemented. I had to leave it there for like a month or something. I had just this big cement blob was like the same color as my tooth it looked really weird and then I had stitches in my lips in my lip um I was I was I was 18 um so it was definitely my adult tooth it was not it was not nothing else was gonna grow back <laughs> So after that, it was fine, but like you could definitely, I mean, you can see a difference in like my gum line. Um, gum line, the sequel to drum line. That was stupid. But as I uh, got older and Really? You would never notice? I notice it so much, but I guess it's like my face. But see, like when I smile, like, eh, you can kind of see it's like, what's that? Is her lip stuck to her tooth? Why is it different? You know, it looks a little weird. Um, yeah. So as I got a little older, my tooth died. <laughs> it just, it didn't. I'm not playing a game today, but thank you for asking. My tooth died. It started to like turn brown. And they said it was like, uh, it wasn't like a stinky rotten tooth. It was like just the blood supply or whatever something was. I don't know. I don't know exactly how it works. So I'm trying to find a pick. I got my crown. I'm trying to think, Jesus. It's uh, everything. The last like f five or six years have just been a complete blur. 
I got my crown and then, yeah, it's not Maureen Ponderosa status tooth, but it looked not great. I got my crown shortly before I got Invisalign. So I did have it for a while. I had my weird tooth for a little while. Well, no, no, I got a new crown, sorry. Is this tooth history fun? I got a new crown right before I got Invisalign because my crown broke. And it was because my teeth were crooked on the bottom and it was hitting my crown. And the dentist was like, if you don't straighten your teeth, this is just gonna keep happening. And I was like, you son of bitch. I'm trying to find a toothpick. Toothpicks. Send toothpicks. I'm honestly, I'm not that like, I know a lot of people hate going to the dentist. I really don't care. I'm fine to go to the dentist. I don't mind. I'm a good sport. I got a crown. Sometime. This is fun. It doesn't matter. Why am I trying to find a picture of my brown tooth? Doesn't matter. No one cares. Doesn't matter. Okay. Now I've done six rounds and now is time for to start the lace edge. So I'm gonna BRB. Yeah. Yeah, dentistry is like more expensive than medical stuff because you have to have medical insurance or else you get a fine but you don't have to have dental insurance so most people are just paying out of pocket for dentistry so yeah i paid like 5k for invisalign and it was because i was breaking my crown and because i had tmj and my jaw was popping pop lock and drop it so you know it would have been nice if I had insurance because I was really getting it for a medical reason not cosmetic anyways okay I'll be right back I'll be right back don't go Okay. All right, folks. So now I'm going to be here probably until noon because I have stuff to do. Um, did your jaw stop popping? Shall my dentist give me some pills to strengthen cartilage and bruxism plaque? And a bruxism plaque. Um, okay, so here's what happened with the TMJ. I. It did stop popping now that I've completed my Invisalign, you know, like when I would chew, it would pop and there would be times if I was like laying in bed or at a weird angle chewing something, there would be times that my jaw would pop out and I would just be like, Ugh! Ugh! and I would have to like really slowly get it back into place. It was not nice. Um, so weirdly though, and I didn't really see anyone else talking about this when they did their Invisalign like a month into Invisalign 
my jaw like locked up it was like I don't know what exactly happened but just like the change in position of my teeth and the grinding that I was doing it just like my muscles just like seized up or something and when I uh, like I could yank on the bottom of my jaw and like pop it out to open it wide but I could only open my mouth like that much like a finger width you know um and it was really uncomfortable and I went to a jaw specialist he gave me muscle relaxers and he said don't pop out your jaw he was like don't do that please don't do that just gently stretch it before it pops out you know to the point where it's not popping out it's just stretching you're stretching the muscles and eventually it settled into the place it needed to be it was not a nice experience but i've never heard of anyone else having that happen before okay so i'm going to start my lace edge now and this will require more focus so aka don't talk to me i'm kidding you can talk to me so here's my thing all right ready here we go All right, row one, knit one, yarn over, slip, slip, knit, knit one. Knit two together, oh God. Oh God. Knit two together, yarn over, knit one. Repeat. Uh, yeah, so I will show you. Um, this is a pattern. This is a, a chart, a knitting chart. Girl, okay, oh, just as it focuses. This is a knitting chart. So I'm doing a, um, what is it called? English mess, mesh lace, which is a common thing, apparently. So this is a yarn chart where you can see like each, like this is a row, you're going this way. So that means yarn over, that means slip, slip, knit, knit you know like that i don't read the chart really i don't like it so it's also written here so you would knit one asterisk yarn over slip slip knit knit one knit two together yarn over knit one and then you repeat what's in here until the end of the row okay now you know the animals are good thank you for asking Okay, so I just did that and I ended with knit one. Okay, yarn over. Here we go. Hello. Yarn over. Slip, slip, knit. Oh, Lord. Knit one. Knit two together. Get in there, get in! Tiny needles. Ugh, cheapers. Two together, okay. Yarn over, knit one. I'll show you what it will look like. The lace edge. Oh God, I don't wanna drop anything. It will eventually look like this. Okay. Why will this, why does this refuse to focus? There we go. Okay. So I just did knit one, yarn over, slip, slip, knit, knit one, 
knit two together, yarn over, knit one. Okay. Yarn over. Slip. Slip. Knit. Knit one. Knit two together. <sighs> Girl, getting these tiny little needles into two stitches, not nice. Knit two together, yarn over, knit one. Repeat. Yarn over. Oh, slip. Oh, Jesus. Slip. Slip. Oh, knit. And a slip, slip, knit makes a... What is it? Left-leaning decrease. Which is like making the triangle that you saw. Speak in low energy. I'm focusing. What, do you want me to scream? I'm focused. Knit one. Yarn over. Slip. Slip. Also, because there's like a microphone and a camera in my face, I can't see as well. Normally I would have this a little closer to my face. Oh my god, I'm splitting this yarn. <sighs> Girl. Okay, jeez. Jeez. Knit one. Knit two together. Knit two together. High profit. Oh. Knit two together, yarn over, knit one. There have been multiple places in this lace edge that I've been doing on this that um, it messed up. <laughs> Something happened when my counting got off. Um, and it got messed up. So it doesn't look nice everywhere. We love you, Prophet. So that's yarn over knit one. Okay. Yarn over. No, it doesn't. It doesn't still work. It's ugly in a lot of places. Hold on, after I finish this bunch, this chunklet. I will show you where I where I botched it. What the heck is happening? Okay. Knit two together. Get in. Get in. Get in. Lord, I need to get closer. A little light. That didn't help me. A little light. A little light. That's nice. <laughs> no, not helping me. A little light. Knit two together. Yarn over. Knit one. Okay, I'll show you the spots that I'm that I botched up. There's actually one on this other sleeve I was showing you. Ugh. So, um, let me put this behind it so you can see a little clearer. So this part looks good. You can clearly see like the triangles, you know. And then something happened my count got off or something and it starts to look a little wrong. <laughs> it still looks like, you know, 
something. It's just, it's not right. And I, at that point, was like, I am not frogging this and doing it again. It's just going to be that way. So, you know, ideally it would all be nice, organized triangles, but some of it is just crazy, crazy nonsense. It's character. It gives it character. Yeah, abstract knitting. Aikai. Yarn over. Slip, slip. Knit. Knit one. Knit two together. The... <sighs> I can't imagine that it's that difficult to make a pet sweater. Like, it's a long-ish triangle, or tr rectangle, and then, I don't know, you could probably just make it with panels, but I imagine you would, like, knit in the round and then, like, cast off for armholes and then cast off the front and then keep knitting flat to go down the back. I don't know. Um, there, okay. Found you guys videos while watching funny videos about Persona 5, and I have to say, you're got what bores in Persona. Huh? I don't know if you're being nice or mean. Fix it. Oops. You're got what bores in Persona. I don't know. You got right what's boring in Persona. Sorry, I'm not fluent in typo. Yeah, it is boring. <laughs> it's a really good boring game. No shade. Okay. Uh, okay. All right. I know where I am. <laughs> Goodness. Oh. I mean, I would also love a cable knit sweater like he had in Knives Out, but I do not want to do cable knitting. That's hard. And that one is so fancy and complex. It's just a lot. Like what, if you're wondering if something is um, complicated to knit, um, look more at like the textures of the the garment, you know, because like. The structure or construction of something it can either be like sewn together made in pieces and sewn together or like I don't know making a sweater from the top down is not that hard it's like if it has cables if it's like a lace thing or whatever color work um, those are gonna be way harder to keep track of you know Ba do boo 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 ba do boo What's everyone doing today? Oh it's it's Martin Luther King Day. I forgot.
for cough. That's why no one is at work. Wow, bless. Badoobie. I'm at work. I have stuff to do today other than knitting with my cool friends. Book club presentation. That sounds fun. I love a presentation. I used to love that in school. I could give a presentation. And if the teacher would let me make a video, I would. Slip, slip, knit. And knit two together. And that is one round. And now in between, in between the lace rounds, oh my God, girl, get in there. I knit one round. My tummy just made a really loud sound. It said, oh. Yeah, I like public speaking. Can't you tell? I'm a freaking weirdo. So now I can just knit for one round. I heard it's so cold in Seattle. Burr. Burr. I'm an actor. An actor. Everyone's more likely to be depressed today according to stats. I don't know. According to my feng shui calendar, today is a really auspicious day, so... Take that. Oh yeah. So now you can kind of see the lace forming. Cool. Three soft tissue notification. Thanks for this. Very relaxing. Thank you. I'm wrapping up. I'm finishing this round and then I'm gonna go try to get some work done. But I'm really... I think this works for me, the schedule of like getting a stream done first and then getting my stuff done while I still have energy rather than like trying to get all my stuff done and then being like, hopefully maybe I can stream later, you know? So maybe this is my, my good plan going forward. I probably won't stream tomorrow, but maybe I will try to do like Monday, Wednesday, Friday. Monday, Wednesday, Friday, early in the day stream. Yeah. Streaming is really like a workout for me, for sure. Yeah, productivity hours plus uh, peak potency of ADHD medication. <laughs> What about Tuesday, babes? What about it? What about it, love? Tuesday? I've got things to do. Nope, lost it. It's my fave day, isn't it? Cheers. Oi, mister. You mean da? <gasps> Disgusto Uggo, thank you for subscribing. I love your beautiful name. You having a laugh? 
British accents are so funny. Like, I love them. They're so silly sometimes. So dramatic. Such drama with a British accent. Right. Well, you know, so fun. Well, or if you're more proper, well, bruv, I love it. It's so silly. Sometimes you hear a British person say something and it sounds so, I'm trying to think of an example. Mabel, thank you for subscribing. Just like they, they'll they draw it out so long and make it so like, yeah, you know, something like that. It's just like, how are you talking like that? What makes you talk like that? I love it. It's so fun. In it. I love though, like a, like a, like a poorer British accent, like a Cockney, poorer. I don't know. That's how it was described to me in voice and speech. <laughs> a uh, less, less uh, fancy. It's probably not nice to say anymore. The voice and speech. I love a less fancy British accent. Where the where the words cut off. Love it. Unrefined. Like a, a refined British accent is so silly to me. It's so like, ooh, ooh, ooh. It's, ooh, ooh. Like, why are you talking like that? Like if you're from Liverpool, you have one of my favorite accents. If you're Liverpudlian. I want to listen to you talk. I love that. Oh, it's so like chill. You're from Liverpool. I want to listen to you talk. Gordon Ramsay is British, but he's a little more proper. It's fucking raw. A little bit. Have you heard that lady that does the accents on TikTok? She's like a vo uh, an accent coach, dialect, dialogue. Gordon Ramsay is Scottish? Since when? His accent is so British. His accent is so British, what? Was he like raised? I need to look. This is unacceptable to me. That is not a Scottish accent. He has not once said if he could change your fate, Ouija. Gordon Ramsay, British celebrity chef. Born, what are you talking about, Scottish? John Stone? You guys fucking with me? Oh, it, John Stone is in Scotland. I'm about to read this man's biography so that we can figure this out. Oh. He's been living and working in London since he was 16, 17. Yeah, that'll do it. See, I, I hear it. I hear it. I hear the accents. There are two ladies in my knitting group and one of them is Irish and one of them is French and they just ha I just want to listen to them talk all day long. When he was nine years old, he moved with his family to England and grew up in the Bishopton area of Stratford-upon-Avon. What's the worst accent? I 
All accents are beautiful. Maybe like... Yeah, I've, I've heard some accents in America that are not nice. <laughs> Honestly, I think it's probably something American. <clears throat> Probably. Yeah, maybe a valley girl. I, I Yeah, I would probably say valley girl because like I watch a lot of reality TV. And I think most of the people that do like a valley girl. Yeah, like one of those are not from the valley. I'm from the valley. I'm a valley girl. Um, Like most of those I don't know. I think it's just like the vocal fry and the mm, yeah and the nasal mm, yeah. It's uh, you know, it's an effect that people put on. Stop. Uh, you know, it's not anyone's actual accent. It's just something that comes out. Yeah, there have been accents though on, on like 90 Day Fiance where I'm like, oh, I don't like to listen to this person. And I, I don't know if it's the accent. I think it's the person. I think um, one of the most annoying voices that I've heard on 90 Day belonged to a Brazilian woman, but it wasn't a Brazilian accent. It was just her, I think. You know what I'm saying? I am that YouTube gal. That's me. Yeah, it was it was Larissa. I'm referring to Larissa. She taught herself how to speak English from watching TV. Yeah. And uh I've never heard another person from Brazil speak English this way, but she always was adding E to the end of things, and it, it does become irritating. Colti. Who is against the queen will die. That's what she said. I'm trying to think. My favorite accents, though, I can say that. I'm making a top. My favorite accents are... Mm, I love South African. I love a lot of African accents. Like, a lot of, like, West African accents, too, are so, like, melodic. I love Indian accents. I find them really bouncy and again, like a song, like singing. Uh, Kiwis, yes, I love New Zealand accents. They're so cute. I can't do a New Zealand accent. It's like one of the accents that I could just never nail. I mean, not that I'm nailing accents all the time, but you know. Um, and then I, of course I love my uh, my, my Liverpudlians. Um, okay, this next row is going to be a lace row and I'm going to bounce. Um, I have heard of Georgia. You like my Scottish accent? Thank you. Jamaican accents are really fun too. Yeah. Love Scottish, love Irish. I have to find this lady real quick and then I'll end the stream. This is gonna be loud. There we go. I have to find this lady on TikTok who does um, accent coaching. It's gonna take me a while to sift through my likes here. What is the most annoying mistake you hear foreigners make while speaking English? Honestly, 
foreigners speaking English never irritates me. Like people, tr people who their native tongue is not English, trying to speak English and getting it wrong, never bothers me. I cannot imagine trying to speak another language fluently. Like I'm just, I know some Spanish, but not enough to have a conversation. What bothers me is native English speakers speaking English poorly. <laughs> That's what I don't like. I don't like that. And I hear a lot of that too. Especially on 90 Day Fiance. The amount of times that I hear somebody, an English speaking American, saying frustrated, I'm frustrated, it's multiple times by di multiple different people. cannot library mm -hmm. yep so I commend anyone who is trying to speak another language I love it please you're better than me oh etc oh I hate etc and I hate espresso Those really get me. It's not espresso and it's not etc. It's et cetera, et cetera, and espresso. We're trying to find this lady. Here she is. Supposedly. In the words of Chandler Bing, what if I meet the perfect girl and then I break up with her because she says supposedly? Okay. I'm gonna play you this lady, whomst I love. I'm gonna pause the music. Um... Oh, and I can do like this, and then you can hear it also. So I'll do that. So this lady, her name is Actors Accent Coach on TikTok, Accent Queen Sarah Valentine. And she truly is the accent queen. And I love to listen to her do these accents. So I'm going to put it in front of the camera, so hopefully you can read which accent she's doing. And then I think the, the mic will pick up the audio. So hold on. Okay. Here we go. Here she is. Hopefully you can see. Not really. It's not good. Maybe I'll make the camera bigger. Maybe that will help. There she is. You can kind of see by my face. There she is. All right, here we go. Oh, that's really loud. Okay. E. American. You are grounded. Standard British. You are grounded. Devonshire. You are grounded. German. You are grounded. Scottish. You are grounded. Geordie. You are grounded. Brummy. You are grounded. Yorkshire. You're grounded. Scouse. You grounded. Irish. You are grounded. Russian. You're grounded. Cockney. You, my friend, are grounded. <laughs> South African. You are grounded. Northern grounded. Irish. You are grounded. New Zealand. 
You are grounded. British RP. You are grounded. New York. You're grounded. <laughs> Australian. You are grounded. Welsh. You are grounded. French. You are grounded. Southern. You, honey, are grounded. Jamaican. You're grounded. West Country. You're grounded. Spanish. You are grounded. Canadian. You are grounded. Dutch. Yes, you are grounded. You are grounded, yes. You are. Amer Anyways. You know, he's dad, he's Fasha. He's dad, he's Fasha. Yes. I don't know about avoiding the Asian accents. I guess, but maybe that's just she's not good at them. Anyways, I love that. I can link it. I love her. I think she's very talented. Here, I will link it. I love that. I love accents. But I can't, I can't do that. I mean, if I had an accent coach, maybe, but it takes a little. Sometimes there are like words or phrases that you can say to like get into the accent. But Arnar. Arnar. Here's chat. And here I will paste this link in for you. Arnar. South South Africa. South Africa. We're gonna have a bray in South Africa. Oh stunning. I do love stunning. Oh that's stunning. Love. I love that. Say rise up lights, it's razor blades in Australian. Rise up lights, rise up lights, rise up lights. Same thing with beer can bacon in Jamaican accent. It's like if you say beer, beer can in a like Australian accent or something, it sounds like bacon in a Jamaican accent. Beer can. Beer can. Beer can. Beer can, bacon, beer can. I like that. Rise of blades, R N R. Anyways, that was my little uh, thing that I like. Her accents, and I have to stop now because I have to get stuff done. I know. If I need an accent for something. I'll hit her up for sure. I will hit her up. Honestly, that's not a bad price for one on one coaching. Yeah. Scottish people can't say purple burglar alarm, apparently. Well, good thing you would never need to say that, okay? Anyways, I hope you all have a beautiful rest of your Martin Luther Monday, and I'm going to finish this sleeve tonight, and then I'm going to block this, and hopefully it will look nice. Oh, I need to do another a peacoat edge, crochet edge on it, and then I'm done. Anyways, thanks for hanging out with me. This was fun, and to more early streams, cheers, uh, cheers, cheers, love, cheers, love. Uh, uh, oh, oh boy, bacon.